Okay, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. You're all welcome to another series of Farmer Life as per lecture presentation. Uh, this is a lecture presentation that's aimed to benefit all of us. My name is Dr. Abdulhab Abibullah Oladisi, a graduate of veterinary medicine from Osman Danford University, Sokoto, the Farm Alert Outlier Awardee of the 2020-2021 Graduate Set of the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, Osman Danford University, Sokoto. You are welcome once again to Farm Alert Aspire Lecture Presentation. Today, we will be presenting a very exciting topic, aspiring topic, a time real topic, which is the productive technologies in veterinary practice, the prospect and perspective in veterinary or in entrepreneurship. I'm here today with our father, our mentor, a leader for excellence, an expert in the aspect of veterinary tree genealogy, Dr. Umaru Adamu, the director of Veterinary Teaching Hospital of Swan Danford University, Sokoto, so also the head of the department, Department of Veterinary Tree Genealogy and Animal Production. I believe he's a capable man that can do justice to our topic. You are welcome to the stage. Dr. Umaru Adam. Um, thank you very much. And good morning to everybody. Can you hear me, please? Yes, I'm hearing you, sir. Okay. I think um, it's a pleasure um, having this opportunity to participate in this um, farm alert um, um, program. To me, Farm Alert is doing what the government of the country is supposed to do. If we can have about six or uh, sev several Farm Alerts in the country, the problem of livestock production and the deficiency in animal protein for human consumption is going to be a thing of the past. I may not have much to say now, but to wish them well, and they shouldn't be tired with this advocacy program. I think Thank you, sir. for an introduction, this is what I have to say. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, people want to know who you are. My name, is, um, are, my name is Umaru uh, Adamu. I, I came all the way from Niger State to Usman Danford University. I was with Niger State Minister of um, Animal Health and Livestock for, for, for almost four years before this um, latest sojourn into the academic environment. Currently, I am a senior lecturer in the Department of Theory of Genealogy and Animal Production. Even though I have sent my paper out for assessment for associate professor. So we are looking up to when it will come back. I'm also Shana, the, the current um, director of veterinary teaching hospital at Osman Danfordio University. Sokoto. I am married with kids and I am a very ardent lover of livestock across the globe. Okay, sir. You're welcome, sir. Uh, we'll be going to the presentation very soon, sir. I think we wait a bit for more people to join us, sir. All right. You're welcome, sir. Yes, sir. My dear colleagues, good morning. I want to welcome all of you to the 2023 Continue Education Program. This year's Continue Education Program is very unique. It is unique, but because we have shifted from the normal Continue Education Program, the way we use it, now the council is targeting national issues. This year, Mr. President has a vision in the for, to transform the livestock industry. He has 
said it several times, both in his engagement within and outside this country. We have a lot of animals and cows. We are not tendering and given vet opportunity to do ranching and invest in ordinary dairy to give food to our children. That is not a out of plan. We are going to change that in this government. He has no option but to key into that vision. And that is why this year's theme for the continuing education is national prosperity, the veterinarian at the heart of livestock production and food security. We have to be very mindful and focused and key into Mr. President's vision. Join us on the 19th of October for the Veterinary Council Continuing Education Program, where we are going to have a renowned and passionate farmer and a two-time governor of Kano State, who is the convener of the National Livestock Conference, as well as the chairman of the Presidential Committee on Livestock Reform, and the commissioner for agriculture, Lagos State, as well as our renowned professor, Junaidu Abdul Kadri, who I call Sokoto Gudali, who has transformed the livestock industry in Sokoto State to digest and unbundle the National Livestock Reform Report so that we will be able to key into Mr. President's vision. I hope you have registered. I have registered. I look forward to hosting you on the 19th of October, 2023. My dear colleagues, I know you can agree with me that the time is veterinary o'clock. Okay, thank you. You're all welcome. Prop, your slide is, is still is not up now. You put up your slide now, sir. That was, I, I think I sent the slide to Dr. Tunsia to see if they can put it on there. I'm having problem course, with sir. the latter. Yes, yes. Oh, okay, sir. So mm. we, we are starting now, sir. As I said before, okay. the topic is uh, vet, reproductive technologies in veterinary practice. The prospect and perspectives in entrepreneurship. So you can go on now, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you once again. And you are welcome. This is going to be the, the outline of my production, uh, uh, presentation, I mean. We'll first start with introduction. We'll say some things about assisted reproductive technologies, the common ones that we practice in Nigeria for now. we we'll also say some few things, the prospect of entrepreneurship, the challenges and the way forward. Okay, sir. Um, the exponential increase in the population of the country is pegged at Nigeria having a population of 402 million by the year 2050. To some, this is an alarming report. But to we veterinarians, we are seeing it as an opportunity. Because if you go by the World Health Organization daily recommended animal protein intake per head, it is 30 gram. So in the country today, we have people that consume less than 10 gram of animal protein per day in the country. And you, if you look at it critically, you can see the shortage and that shortage is a kind of potential for us to, to double up and increase animal production. Before I go on, let me give a brief um, history of um, domestication of, of, of animals. Um, in the olden days, men used to uh, rely on what the, 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 the game of the day before they will be able to eat. So every day they will go into the bush, they will hunt and they will now catch the animal and come and feed on. As time goes on, the demand by the increasing number of the population then was also high on them. So they now decided that 
because some days we'll go for this hunting and we'll not be able to catch any game. So why don't we start catching these animals in multiple so that we can keep them at our, our backyard so that at any point in time, if we have the interest of getting them, we can easily have access. And that was how the idea of um, domestication comes up. So during domestication, you discover that the natural condition for animal um, breeding and production is augmented. There's going to be provision of feed and, and conducive environment for them to breed. And from there, animals that were seasonal before change into unseasonal production and they were able to produce all year round. But still, with this production, it is not enough to meet the, the demand of the, the problem. So this is now causing serious food scarcity concern and it is generating a lot of opportunity for veterinarian. Now there's growth on the utilization of reproductive potential of some food animals, especially the cow. Because if you look at the calf cow, the moment it is give birth to today, it has over 200,000 primordial follicles on its ovary. These primordial uh, follicles are potential for that animal to utilize during its reproductive years. But under natural phenomena or natural circumstances, hardly will a cow at maturity be able to um, calf up to 10 times before it exhausts its reproductive cycles. So these gaps can only be filled by the application of assisted reproductive technology. And in the context of this um, presentation, I will refer ART to be limited to breeding soundness evaluation, artificial insemination, multiple ovulation and embryo transfer. Okay, and our major reference, hello? Yes, sir, we are hearing you, sir. We are hearing you, sir. Okay. Okay, our major reference will be focused on food animals, the cow, the sheep, the goat, and possibly the, the pig. Now let's start with the most basic assisted reproductive technique, which is um, estrous synchronization. Uh, estrous synchronization is the manipulation of the female reproductive tract through the administration of exogenous hormone. These hormones will be able to manipulate the estrous cycle of the animal so as to bring a lot of animal to heat at about the same time. And if you look at this practice, it has assisted in alleviating the managemental problem that we used to have in our farms. Let's take, for instance, in cattle production, if you are into dairy production, the more you have animals coming to pregnancy at the same time, and those animals also parturating at the same time, the more the potential of you yielding a very high quantity of milk at the same time. So if you introduce the concept of estrous synchronization, you'll be able to have a large chunk of animals coming to heat together, being bred at the same time, carrying the pregnancy, and you'll be able to manage that pregnancy through the first trimester, the second trimester, and the third trimester, giving the necessary medical attention and feed to them at the various stages of their um, pregnancy. And at the end of the day, you have very low mortality, uh, infant mortality. Now, let me just say some few things about estrous synchronization. Some of the agents we use in estrous synchronization include um, prostaglandin F2 alpha, progesterone, and gonadotrophin releasing hormone. What you are seeing on this slide is what we call control internal drug releasing device. This device is impregnated with progesterone. And the principle behind its uses is that if you want to bring any animal to heat, this device is going to be implanted after you have assessed your animal and you discover that the animal is in cyclicity and also the animal is not pregnant. But the moment you insert this agent into the vagina of the animal, 
you are going to leave it there for a particular number of days. And when you remove it, you discover that all the animals that you insert this um, device into will definitely come to heat and they will be receptive to men. You can do that if you want to undergo um, natural mating so that by the time you bring them to, to the, you bring the female animals to heat, you expose them to a male animal to meet, to, to meet them um, naturally, or you can artificially inseminate them to achieve pregnancy. This is device, it is available and it can be used at any point in, in time. Um, this is the applicator of the device. You will load the device into the, the barrel of this applicator. This is the loaded um, applicator into the, the device. And um, this is how to insert the device into the, the vagina of an, an animal. And in and, and, any moment you are doing this, you have to strictly observe um, a septic procedure because you are putting this thing into the vagina. At the end of every application, you will make sure that you will clean the device and you also disinfect the device before you mount another device to be inserted into another animal. So this is uh, the device being implanted onto the animal. In most instances, you can leave the device there for either seven days or for 14 days or for 21 days, depending on the species of the animal you want to bring to it. At the end of the day, when you, you are due to remove, it is uh, you, you now get hold of the, the string and you pull it and you discover that in some few days after the removal, the animal will come to the heat. The principle behind it may not be explained by now. Now, another important um, uh, reproductive technologies that is very rampant and is being demanded today by farmers is artificial insemination. Artificial insemination, everybody knows it is the act of um, um, bringing a semen and introducing it into a female animal on heat for conception to occur. You see today in this country, they spent thousands of dollars to import semen um, straws. In this um, era of um, scarcity in foreign exchange, our farmers are still spending so much to bring in these cements from abroad. In fact, the cost of importing just a straw of cement to the country today cannot be less than 20,000 Naira. If you look at the record of um, the Minister of um, Animal Health and, at, at Abuja, you discover that millions and millions of Naira are being wasted on daily basis to import cement. And this is something that even in this country, we can easily take part in do it in our research institution in the university. I mean, a bull with a proven uh, integrity, maybe it is very high in, 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 in milk production, it produces um, a, a female that will, will also give birth to so many uh, reproductive traits you can propagate that, that excellent trait through artificial insemination in, in, in a heart or in a flock. And this artificial semen also circumvent some infertility problem. And I will demonstrate how we are able to circumvent the infertility as a result of incomplete copulation in a breed of, of, of sheep that is very common in, in this part of the country, the Sudanese breed of sheep. If you can have a look at this picture, this is a typical picture of a Sudanese breed of semen. You can see how broad the tail is, al almost covering the vulval opening. So if there is some um, during natural mating, intromission used to be a very serious problem here. And you discover that several of these um, breed of sheep will not conceive. They will just be consuming feed in a flock for years and they will not be productive. So we now thought that how is it possible to have such a, a very um, high demanding um, um, breed of um, sheep? 
and we will not be uh, and will not be able to properly utilize it. So we deducted this system of non-surgical artificial insemination, and these are the instruments we use. We use bovine teeth dilator, early tissue for self, AI gun, and syringes. Now, the most important thing, after synchronizing the animal, you now use your vagina speculum to locate the cervix of the, the sheep, and you use early tissue for self that is not traumatic to now bring out the the external os of the of the service. You can see that this is the external os of the service being demonstrated here. Then once you have access to the external os of the service, you now collect your semen from a standby ram. You also analyze the semen to make sure that it has at least um, over 70% gross motility. Then this is going to be mounted into a, 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 a sterile syringe. And by the time you you have the access to the the opening of the service. You you push it in and you introduce your 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 semen. In fact, the picture you are seeing next is one successful artificial insemination we carried out here in Sokoto, and um, we were able to have a a, a, a lamp to it. So multiple ablation and embryo transfer is another important at assisted reproductive technology can, that can be employed by our farmers. You see, just as you also propagate an excellent reproductive trait in, in the sire or in the bull, such can also be propagated in the, in, the, in the cow. Remember I told you that the potential of a particular cow to have 200,000 primordial follicle is possible, but in less than, uh, of all this potential of 200,000, it hardly will be able to uh, produce um, up to 10 times. So you can super ovulate, get this uh, um, embryo and, trans and transfer it into a surrogate dam. If you are doing that, you'll be able to have at least 10 Calvin per cow per year. And if you multiply it by 10, in the reproductive life cycle of a cow, you'll be able to have about 100 cow per, 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 per cow with a very... Um, excellent trait. Now, for surgical um, collection of embryo, these are the, the procedure to go through. You, you, after your insemination, you are going to do the collection at the saving of the insemination. And you prepare the animal for surgical procedure. This is the draping initial skin um, incision. Then here you explore or you explore the you sterilize the, the uterus. If you also look at this um feature picture critically, you see that we have about two corpus luteum being displayed here on one of the ovaries. That is to tell you that the, these are the 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 um um the sites that ovulation occur on this animal. There are several of it. If you look at the other side too, so this is going to guide you on the number of embryos we are going to collect at the day. Now, this is the insertion of um, Foley catheter for flushing to, to occur. Then after flushing, you now take your, 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 your fluid under um, stereo microscope to, to assess the, the viability and the number of embryos that you collected. Then you can do the transfer immediately. You can, you can store it for future use. These are potentials that are available in the country. But lack of resources, such potential are not being fully exploited. Now, another basic ca um, career that can be employed by veterinarians, especially telogenologists, to end a living is pregnancy diagnosis. You know, if you look at the history of um, animals and, and man being their companion distinct, men are always inquisitive to know the status of pregnancy of their animal after breeding. So they, they used to demand for pregnancy diagnosis and you can just go to them, do the diagnosis, tell them the outcome of the pregnancy diagnosis and they're going to be happy and they, got, they are going to pay for that. So routinely for now, these are the basic methods we use for pregnancy diagnosis. We use rectal palpation, abdominal ballotment and ultrasound and scanning. For um, abnormal, rectal palpation, everybody knows if you are doing rectal palpation, the animal needs to be restrained in a shoot. Or if you're on the farm, you have I've got people that I will restrain the animal. Now, there are four cardinal signs for you to pick to know whether the animal is pregnant. In fact, it is not for you to look at 
to have all these signs at a time during your, your, your analysis. The moment you pick any one of them, you can now say that um, the animal is pregnant and they include uh, the palpation of the amniotic sac, the palpation of the, the fetus itself, what they call fetal membrane slip, and the palpation of the placentum. Now, the game changer in pregnancy diagnosis is ultrasonography. In fact, I will share this experience with my younger ones and veterinary colleagues. If you decide to take as a career that you are only going to be interested in diagnostic imaging, you will make it. Let me give you one instance. To scan a cow for pregnancy diagnosis alone, you can get as high as 5,000 Naira. And if you are the serious type and you know your job very well, it is going to be easy for you to scan up to 50 animals in a day. If you multiply 5,000 by 50, you know what we are talking about in a day. And you multiply that amount also by 30, you know what you are going to expect at the end of the month. So for large animal um, scanning, I don't want to go into detail into the principle of scanning. Since we are going to use transrectal prop, these are the basic two ways to hold your, 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 your prop. One, you now get it firm within your finger as demonstrated by A. Then secondly, you put it in between your finger while you get hold of the reproductive tract. Each and every one of them has advantage. The advantage of using A is that you'll be able to have to position the window of your, of your probe very well so that you are not going to be scanning out of the blues. And the, the other advantage of using option B is that you'll be able to manipulate the, the, the tract and bring it into focus for you to put the window of your probe very well for pregnancy diagnosis. Now, let's come to entrepreneurship. You know, entrepreneurship is all about being self-employed. After being self-employed, how do you also use that scientific knowledge to assist others to come into the revenue of be able to generate what to meet their ends miss? Now, I used to discuss with my student that every single veterinarian is an industry. Because of the several uh, services that you can render and get money out of that um, um, analysis. Let's take, for instance, if you are into breeding soundness evaluation alone, I would like um, Farm Alert to bring that advocacy to our farmers that there's need for them to assist, assess their, their bull or their male animal before they, they engage into natural breeding. Because there is a report from the United States of America that in that country, they used to have a loss of over $100 million annually due to no conduction of breeding soundness evaluation on their bull before they expose it for natural breeding. In Nigeria, it is only good that knows the amount of um, money that we are losing on an annual basis due to negligence of breeding soundness evaluation. Because there are several indications why it is necessary for you to perform breeding soundness evaluation. Number one, before you expose the animal, you'll be able to tell to some extent that the animal is going to be fit for the breeding you want to expose it to. It is also going to give you a clue to have the accurate or the proper male to female ratio in that breeding plan. And secondly, if there's a failure of a breeding plan, you can use breeding soundness evaluation to know whether the failure is coming as a result of the incompetency of the male or it is coming as a result of the incompetency of the female. The following are also potential professional services that can be linked to veteran reproduction for careers. This includes diagnostic imaging, just as I have earlier explained, estrogen synchronization, obstetrical and gynecological services. You discover that in your practice, several uh, you will encounter several obstetrical techniques. A, a cow is not able to graduate. Now that Nigerians even have the interest of crossbreeding, you discover that they are going to uh, crossbreed a very large breed of, of sire with our own local one. And by the time it is not properly checked, you discover that if it comes to parturition, there's always dystopia as a result of fetal maternal disproportion. 
So it is a very good uh, thing for veterinarians to explore so that they'll be able to advise their farmer on what to do as at one do. The issue of also antenatal services should be advocated for in veterinary practice because you discover that the uh, nutritional requirement of a pregnant animal at first trimester is not the same thing as the nutritional requirement of a pregnant animal at the second trimester. So also the third trimester. So if we, are, if we can advocate to our farmers to engage a veterinarian so that they'll be able to advise them properly on the way to, um, to give proper diet to their animals during gestation and so many others, I think it is going to help in a, a big way in bringing money to veterinarians that are um, practicing some of these um, uh, services. The prospects. Potential farmers today are looking at veterinarians to, for the way out. If you look at the, the advert that was displayed by our able um, uh, president of the council, that the presidency is even trying to key in to livestock production now. So the sky is not only going to be our limit for now, but it is going to be our stepping stone so that we will now collaborate with, uh, with the government to render our services. Pro probably before, they will tell you that as a veterinarian, if you work, maybe you, if you finish your studies, you don't have any work to do in the country. In fact, let me share this experience with this um, forum. You remember in 2020, ASU went on strike. After that strike also, there was this issue of um, COVID-19. In fact, to complain of any shortage of what I will use to sustain myself and even to sustain my family and to even assist some professional colleague. The major ban to practical application of ART today is lack of confidence because um, some, they are always afraid that after spending such huge humongous amount of money on maybe AI, so sometimes the, the percentage conception used to be very, very discouraging. And there are gradually been eroded away due to recent successes being achieved by the application of ART now. Farmers can testify that um, the incidence of having very uh, low percentage of conception as a result of AI before is almost becoming a thing of, of the, the past. Now, way forward. The basic way forward is to demonstrate or to showcase our, our capability. And older professionals should do more in mentoring younger colleagues. And we should try to have several farm alerts in the country. Thank you for listening. Thank you, sir. Uh, we really appreciate Many people have commented. Many people were very happy with the presentation. Uh, I personally, I thank you, sir, for this wonderful presentation. So educative, so insightful, so aspiring for we uh, upcoming generation. I believe, inshallah, many people have uh, taken their own part from this. So please, if you have questions, uh, you can drop your question in the section below. So, sir, I, I have a few questions for you, sir, for others start dropping their questions. Yes, sir. Uh, the, the first question that we ask you, sir, is that I, as said by the president of Federal Republic of Nigeria, the PCN president, you look at the first, uh, the first slide that was shown before the presentation, PCN president also discussed about the continued education, which all this based on livestock production in Nigeria, how the president wants to reform the livestock uh, segments of the country. Uh, I want to ask, is there space for the productive technologies in this aspect of livestock uh, reformation that we are facing? Okay. You, you, you can take one on that, sir. Yes, sir. Um, honestly, there can be no improvement of um, production without the application of assisted reproductive technology. It is my belief that the president, being somebody that is well informed and well aware of the potential of the application of this um, reproductive technology, 
In fact, I, I can beat my chest to tell you that it is well captured in this transformation agenda of the current government. Okay, sir. Th thank you, sir. Uh, that you, you mentioned some agent that we can use for, we can use in terms of as assisted reproductive technologies. Uh, number one is that, are these agents really available in the country or are these agents really available? Because many people do hear about the agents. They don't know if they are available. That is number one. Then number two is that using this agent, do they even have any effect on the product of the animals? Probably maybe some animals that are being used for reproduction and later on, someone or the individual decided to like, time, I mean, sell it for, for production or for product like meat, milk and other things. So do these agents have effects on the product of the animals? Thank you very much for that question. For the, the first question is, yes, if you ask, you will know. If you try to seek for the knowledge, you are going to be informed. The agents are readily available. Maybe the affordability may be an issue, but if you look at the um, cumulative outcome that is going to come at the end of the day, it is worth trying. But for the availability, the agent is available. But affordability, there's a problem. So, but, and it's, it's going to be in one of our advocacy to the government that if they can subsidize the price of this hormonal agent so that farmers can have them at a cheaper rate, you know? Then for a, just for the residual effect of the agent that we use for synchronization, there's nothing different um, from other biologics that we use in the treatment of animals. More so, most of these hormonal agents that we are using on animals are also obtained in man. And they have their own um, bioavailability um, period when you administer them in, in, in animals. And for now, there is paucity of any um, detrimental effect of the usage of this um, hormonal agent in, in animal on, on, on man. Okay, okay. okay. Th thank you, sir, for that. Uh, another question I'll be asking is that, uh, are there any disadvantages to these assisted reproductive technologies? Different technologies yeah. that I've mentioned, are there any disadvantages? Yeah. Yeah. There can never be any good thing without disadvantage. Even mm -hmm. the issue of the high cost of acquiring some of these things is a disadvantage because it is not every farmer that will be able to afford the, the the services of this hormonal or assisted reproductive technology. And the other disadvantage that may also be available on, on, on it is that there's lack of skills, enough skills in the proper application of the, the, the technology. And that is why in the past, you discover that um, the percentage conception rate, especially following AI, is not something to, to write home about. But with the increasing expertise now and the increased interest from veterinarians and co, that is gradually being eroded away. Um, um, another advice that I also give on, on this is that um, government should liaise with research institutions and university to make sure that they organize workshop and training sessions for field veterinarians so that they can get more skills on the application of some of these assisted reproductive technology. Government should also try as much as possible also to provide tools and equipment to our teaching hospitals, to our faculty of veterinary medicine, so that these equipments will be readily available in the process of training our students, so that by the time they graduate, they will be uh, used to the, uh, um, the use, use of some of these um, equipment. Because for now, there's that of um, um, availability of some of these equipment. Okay, okay, sir. Yes, sir. People have started asking questions. Please, if you have questions, you can ask. You can drop your question in the comment section. But before we move into their questions, I, I, I still have about two questions, sir. One of the questions I have is that, what is the possibility of establishing reproductive units in our veterinary uh, clinics across the nation? Because I believe that uh, in human... Uh, our human medical uh, counterparts 
in most of their clinics, they usually reproductive unit whereby anybody with reproductive issues usually go to them. So is there any possibility that in our own terms or in our own uh, segment, can we also have reproductive units apart from the general clinic that is that, that we have generally in the country? Yeah, it's, it, there's every possibility and need. Maybe the questioner knows very well of what is happening here in, in Sokoto, that in the Department of um, Theory, Genealogy and Animal Production, we have our um, um, fertility uh, clinic where we attend to issues of reproduction generally. And since um, Thirio is um, a, a clinical department, we are always in, in lies in, in, in contact with the, the, the veterinary teaching hospital. And if you remember just about two months ago, there was a reproductive problem in one farm in Sokoto here. They were having issues of um, um, abortion. And when we went there, we investigated, we collected a sample, and we were able to establish that it was uh, a, a, as a result of outbreak of campylobacteriosis in that farm. And we swing into action and we, 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 nip the, the, we, we solve the problem instantly. So if all other faculty of veterinary medicine and teaching hospital can have such um, uh, a unit, it will go a long way in solving reproductive um, problem generally in, in, in our husbandry system in the country. Okay, sir. All right, sir. Uh, I'll, I'll be taking the questions of others. The last question, I will leave it to the end of the presentation. So one of the questions that was asked by others, thank you for asking the questions and thank you for joining. So someone asked that, what is the, which of these two is better, surgical or non-surgical artificial insemination? Which of them is more safer, more easier, and have 100% accuracy in terms of its uh, practice, surgical or non-surgical artificial insemination? Um, from my own experience and even from literature, the easiest, the simplest, and the most cost-effective of the two methods is the non-surgical um, method of artificial insemination. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Uh, another question that was asked and is that as an upcoming... Hello? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And for the percentage and um, conception rate, it has a yes, significant high rate of um, conception. If okay. it is, okay. if the protocols are well followed. In fact, I was to even go to Saudi Arabia to make a presentation in one of their, their seminars on this non-surgical um, artificial insemination in Sudanese breed of, um, of um, sheep last year. I think in 2021, but for the stoppage of our salaries, we, we had paucity of funds and I was not able to, to attend. We can see some of the, the shortcomings and the, the challenges we are facing in the university as, 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 uh, the, as a result of having less found and we will not be able to explore our, our potential to the fullest, our, our intellectual knowledge to the fullest. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. Another question that was asked is that as an upcoming veterinarian who is passionate about production, is he allowed to crossbreed the animals using this technique? Hello, can you repeat that question again? It's like there was a crack in your voice. Okay, uh, uh, yes, sir. As an upcoming veterinarian who is passionate mm. about production, mm. is he allowed? to cross-breed animals using this technique? Definitely it is allowed. But the advice I will give to the young chap uh, aspiring to be uh, an expert in the field of serial genealogy is for you to have a very excellent mentor, have the patient to stay with him as much as possible before you can go out to the field for its practicality of your, your knowledge. Okay. Okay. Th th thank you, sir. Yeah. Another question that was asked, this is just like an advice. And I think the questionnaire really wants you to advise our government, our, our authorities. 
on, on this issue of artificial insemination or any other uh, uh, assisted reproductive technology, sir. The questioner said that, thanks for the presentation. It will be appreciated if mentorship program in this area is made available to help the young and willing feds, especially in the practical aspects. So I, I think the question I want to appreciate, I want to advise uh, the authorities in terms of uh, establishing mentorship programs. Thank you. The advice is going to be taken. And another two, yes, again, is um, for us to have the opportunity to have an ear to the government. You know, in the country today, you know, the politics because so many things. The government is on on its own. The, they know of the potentials that abound in our universities. And uh, they also know what and the, the university can 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 do for the development of the of the nation. But uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, now that we are having a president that is willing to listen to us, I think this is a golden opportunity, and we should go out um, selflessly and seamlessly to 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 talk to them and and and, and advise them that. Um, this is something that is possible in the country. You know, there was a time I, I had an opportunity in one state of the Federation to talk to people that were in government then. I made some parables and some references to them that the special government of people that are ready to go into reproduction, that time I, I, I told them that how much is a liter of petrol compared to a liter of milk. How much is a truck load of cattle compared to a tank load of petrol? Mm. How much is a liter of petrol compare to a liter of ground nut. In fact, the, the opportunities, in fact, after that statement, they almost became speechless. And it is known to them that livestock industry has the potential or the capacity of having a business of over 30 trillion naira if it is fully explored. Do you know how much they sell a three-month-old Balami cow here, Balami sheep here in Sokoto? Mm. Mm. Do you know how much they sell an adult Balami ram during festive period? Mm. Do you know how much Nigeria will generate if they mm. have agreement with some countries like Saudi Arabia, that they will be able to supply them ram during their Hajj period. Do you know how mm. much Nigeria will earn if they fully explore the potential of propagating the breeding of donkeys? Mm. It is no longer news that our legislature, our National Assembly, they ban the, the exportation of camel that they also ban the slaughtering of, um, I mean, uh, donkeys. That is not the way out. The way out is mm. to encourage massive production of this, since it is a quantity or a commodity that is being highly demanded by countries like China. Is it not an opportunity to look for a way out, to have the production of millions of millions of numbers of donkeys in this country, so that we can be, mm. we can increase our GDP, Rather than banning its, its exportation and banning its, its, its you know its, its, its slaughtering or sacrificing, so some mm. of these policies sometimes are not the right thing to do. But I want them to start looking into these institutions. Let them bring them closer, and we should have that patriotic zeal to contribute to the development of our country. Wallahi, I used yeah. to say that every veterinarian is an industry. Mm. Every veterinarian is an industry. If the full potential of each and every veterinarian can be exploited in this country, 
it will solve our problem and solve it for good. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. We are, we are approaching our time. Uh, let's take the few questions that we have. Someone asked that uh, in using frozen cement or fresh cement, which of them is more prevailable and which of them give more accuracy in terms of the production? Frozen cement or fresh cement? Well, sometimes failure of using some of these things may not only be attributed to the, the cement alone. In fact, if you want to get the fault of um, the failure of any AI program, you need to do several investigations. It may even be attributed to the collection process and the processing and the packaging process of the semen. And it may be attributed to the way the, um, the, the, the procedure is also carried out. But above all, if they are well taken and packaged very well and the procedure is well, well followed, I think there's very little um, significance of any um, success rate between the two be it frozen okay. or fresh. Okay. So I, I, I think that has answered the next question, which says, is it possible to use a semen immediately after connection? I think uh, that has yes. answered that that's fresh semen. Yes. So uh, another question that was asked uh, is that family planning in animals, is it advisable to do family planning in animals? Something like uh, you want to stop the conception of an old animal. Like, is it advisable? With the use of some agents, I, I, for now, I think if you have an old animal mm -hmm. with an excellent reproductive trait mm -hmm. that you think will not have the stamina and all the strength to carry out gestation till its end, I think that is where multiple ovulation and embryo transfer can come in. Instead okay. of Calling the animal completely, you can engage the animal in multiple ovulation, collect the embryo, and transfer it into a surrogate dam. But above oh. all, if ger geriatric changes is so enormous, I think it is easier for you to call the animal that will start introducing some unnecessary hormone into it. Except for okay. companion okay. animals, that I may not be able okay. to say much about. Okay, Th thank, you. thank you so much for the presentation, and thank you for answering the questions. So uh, the last thing that we want you to do, sir, in two minutes or three minutes, I want you to advise our authorities, the PCN, the MVMA, even the government and other authorities in terms of these uh, livestock productions and even in terms of the prospective ministry that we are looking at, sir. Um, um, that is excellent. I am calling on all stakeholders, be it government, be it our able president of the council, be it our older veterinarians and the younger ones aspiring to be um, field practitioners. Please, Nigeria needs veterinarian now than ever before. Let us come out in mass, um, and apply our intellectual knowledge to uh, promote the GDP of this country. I know we can do it. We have the potentials. We have the manpower. And with little encouragement from government. In fact, that is the next area to look into to solve our problem. And let me make one conclusion. This, their poverty alleviation program they are into. Instead of having some set of Nigerians, and you are giving them either 10,000 10, naira, 20,000 20, naira, or 30,000 30, naira. If you look at the history of animal domestication, most especially for small ruminants, in fact, let the government inculcate animal breeding into their um, end power program so that our rural communities can be empowered with some of these animals. I know some individual, individuals that are doing here in Sokoto. They will buy maybe two sheep, one ram, two goat, 
one buck and they will give to interested farmers that really want to engage in such practices. And if, if you have one goat and one buck in a year, you'll be able to have at the end of the day, you, uh, if you have um, five, five, I mean, five does and one buck, you'll be able to multiply that in just one year. Because as we all know, they have the potential to pasturate two times in a year. So if you have um, five, you'll be expecting 10. And some can even give birth to two. They can give birth to three. And in some instance, they can give birth to four. So to me, this is the best way to alleviate program um, poverty in the country. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. We really appreciate you. The farmer lot also appreciate you. And everybody that joins really appreciates uh, the presentation, sir. And I believe uh, everybody here will make use of this presentation. Everybody will move into natural productions and enhance the production, alleviate the poverty in the country. So uh, at this juncture, I would like to extend our appreciation to everybody that joins this program. You are all welcome. We really thank you for giving out your time to be with us today. And I would also like to appreciate the Farm Alerts for establishing or organizing this uh, kind of program. I believe uh, these are the programs that will engage more veterinarians, that will enhance the practice of we veterinarians in the country. Uh, I pray may God continue to prosper the, the organizers, may God prosper to continue to prosper our presenters for today and all of us that join. Uh, the program still continues next week. Or uh, the, the program will continue very soon and will be you will be given or there will be uh, advertisement or announcements on the next date of the program. Looking forward to see you then. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. I still remain Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, a graduate of veterinary medicine from Usman Danfodio University, Sokoto. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And goodbye to you all. My dear colleagues, good morning. I want to welcome all of you to the 2023 Continuing Education Program. This year's Continuing Education Program is very unique. It is unique, but because we have shifted from the normal Continuing Education Program, the way we use it, now the council is targeting national issues. This year, Mr. President has a vision in the for, to transform the livestock industry. He has said, it several times, both in his engagement within and outside this country. We have a lot of animals and cows. We are not tendering and given vet opportunity to do ranching and invest in ordinary dairy to give food to our children. That is not a out of plan. We are going to change that in this government. We have no option but to key into that vision. And that is why this year's theme for the continuing education is national prosperity, the veterinarian at the heart of livestock production and food security. We have to be very mindful and focus and key into Mr. President's vision. Join us on the 19th of October for the Veterinary Council Continuing Education Program where we are going to have a renowned and passionate farmer and a two-time governor of Kano State who is the convener of the National Livestock Conference as well as the chairman of the Presidential Committee on Livestock Reform and the Commissioner for Agriculture, Lagos State as well as our renowned professor Junaidu Abdelkadri, who I call Sokoto Gudali, who has transformed the livestock industry in Sokoto State to digest and unbundle the National Livestock Reform Report so that we'll be able to key into Mr. President's vision. I hope you have registered. I have registered. I look forward to hosting you on the 19th of October, 2023. My dear colleagues, I know you can agree with me that the time is veterinary o'clock.